Hey, this is Timmy G. Welcome to my video on how to record a mix in DJ Pro 2. This is the second uh, video I've done on this topic. Before we get started, I just want to thank everyone. Um, I just reached my 1,000th subscriber on YouTube, and I'm super happy about it. And I just want to thank everyone who subscribed so far. And if you haven't subscribed and you want to watch some more DJ com content or sound design content or my original music, be sure to consider subscribing. Um, but anyway, let's get back to the video. Uh, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to go over how to record a mix using DJ Pro 2 and Logic Pro, which is um, Apple's digital audio workstation. Uh, the reason that it's so difficult to record a mix in DJ Pro 2 is because um, if you're going to use a Spotify song, you can't record within the software. So um, this is basically a workaround of how you can record your mix, even if you are using Spotify songs. So recording a mix that has Spotify songs is something that a lot of people want to do. So anyway, let's get started. So if you watch my first video on this topic, um, what we did is we basically used the, the, an older version of a MacBook's headphone jack, uh, and we could switch it to a line in, which makes us be able to record um, the signal that's coming into the computer. Now, from the comments that people left on my last video and some research that I've done, it seems that recording on the newer MacBooks isn't possible just with the headphone jack. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a sound card. So I have a sound card right here, and this sound card um, will allow you to record your mix. So right here we have... I have no idea if this is in focus, by the way. This plugs into USB. So we have a headphone jack. So this is for output. And we have the microphone jack right here, which is for input. And that will allow us to um, record our mix. Now, the one drawback of using a sound card like this is that we can only record our mixes in mono. If you want to see how to record your mix in stereo, I will show you how. And you can check out my last video on this topic. So what we're going to do first is if you see my screen in DJ Pro 2, I have two tracks loaded, two tracks off of my Frog Rhythm EP that I just released in, at the end of June. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to get out of the full screen here and I'm going to load Logic Pro. So this is Logic Pro. Like I said, this is Apple's digital audio workstation. I use Logic Pro for um, my music production as well as any audio editing that I have to do. Um, so as we load this, I typically use my own <clears throat> template, which is called blank. And this has no, none of Apple's presets. It's basically just a, it's as it is, it's a blank project. Um, and theirs are kind of full of presets and I don't love them, but since not everyone has a blank thing that people are using, um, I figured that I'll use one of the Apple ones. So I'm going to use the multi-track here. And unfortunately, this multi-track project is going to come with 24 channels plus the master channel. And we don't need all of those channels. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit B to get out of this. And I'm going to get rid of tracks 24 through 20 or through number two. So I just hit shift and click. I'm going to full screen this so we have a better... View. So I'm going through 24 to 2, and I'm just going to hit the delete button on my keyboard. Now they're all gone. So we only care about this right here, this this one track. So what, we're, what we want to do is we want to record our audio from the DJ controller. So if you can see this, let me see. It's at the very top of your screen right here. You see, we see that we have two RCA cables, and I have that cable going into the line in of my computer. Um, but if you are watching this because that the line in function doesn't work, don't worry. You would plug that right in to the microphone jack here, if this is plugged in. And then you'd select that as your audio device. So anyway, I'm going to go to Logic Pro, Preferences, and Audio. And right now we have my um, audio interface called the Apogee One. But since I want to record through the line in of my computer, or you would want to record through whatever the, whatever your sound card is called, you're, want, you're going to want to switch that. So I'm going to do um, input device built in. And I'm going to apply the change. And the reason I'm going to do built in 
is if you if we minimize out of this and we click on my system preferences I have my um, my input to the line in function of my computer um, now if you want to know how to get your computer to get from the head to be used as a headphone jack to the line in if it's possible you would go to the system preferences and there'd be something right here called use headphone jack for or use headphone port for line in, the input or output and you would select input and I go over that in my last tutorial on this which is linked in the description below so anyway I'm gonna get out of this and I'm gonna full screen logic pro again and where did that preferences go audio there it is I don't know oh it's being a little weird okay anyway we don't need this we have already applied our change so we're back so now we see that here's our track and right now it has stuff on bus one bus two it looks like it's all the way down but I'm just gonna turn these off by just clicking right there and we see right here that this circle that circle represents that we are using a, a mono recording if you are able to use the line in it is capable for stereo so you're gonna to want to change that by just clicking on the circle and now we get the two circles so that's the stereo and then we want to go to input right here and if you're using the line in, it'll say input one and two, which means that you have your two stereo tracks, which is great. Um, but if you have um, the sound card right here, if you have it plugged into this microphone here, it'll you could do you could pick right here for this to be a stereo track, but it still would only record in mono, so it doesn't really matter. So anyway, I'm gonna keep it as stereo. And then I'm gonna I'm just gonna scratch my track right here, and I'm gonna do that. I'm actually gonna click this, so this will allow us to listen to it a little bit. And this right here means that we have sound coming out, which is great. Um, and right here, my this is this controls the gain. If it's too loud, like let's say I have it on twelve. Right here, this little orange zero zero, that means that we clipped and we don't want to clip because that will distort our uh, mix and it will not sound that good. So I suggest that you leave, if you're playing a track, leave yourself what's called headroom. So if I play this track right now and I refresh this, we have minus 10 dB, which is perfect. That's more than enough headroom. Because um, if we're playing two tracks at the same time, like this, if you want, one, it sounds terrible, but two, um, it's still not going to that digital limit of zero, which is which we'd be considered clipping, so we're all set there. So now we are ready to record. We have um, our audio ready, so I'm going to hit this R to record. And if I want to listen to um, the track being recorded, I keep this I on. If I don't want to listen to it record, I could turn it off. Um, so I'm, I'm going to leave it on for now. So anyway, to record, you hit this, whoops, you hit this red button right here. It'll record. So I'm going to do that right now. And we hear this little clicky thing. This is the metronome. If we were playing an instrument to the same tempo of the track, we'd want to do that, but we're not. So I'm going to turn that off just if it's annoying you or whatever. Um, and now I'm going to go back to DJ Pro. And this is still recording, even though I'm getting out of it. And now I'm going to play a, just a quick little mix. So I'm going to hit Shift and Q to get both my tracks to the um, beginning. And I'll start on Frog Rhythm. Now, I just fair warning, I don't have headphones. I'm just doing this off the screen, so it might be a terrible mix. And I'm going to, I'm going to put Stop and Go in right now. Let's see how that sounds. Good enough. And now I'm gonna go back to Logic Pro, and I understand we're going back and forth a lot. It's kind of annoying, but it's you. It's the only way that I know, at least, that you can record your mix with Spotify songs. These songs are from Spotify. I made those songs, but they, the, I'm DJing from the Spotify version of them. Anyway, to stop the mix, 
I just hit the space bar, or you could have hit the stop button right here. It turned into a play, like this stop right here. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna go full screen again, and to we we see that this is taking up more than our window. So I'm gonna hit Z, and that will zoom in on the the full audio track. And if I if I hit Enter or Return, and then hit the space bar to play, we don't hear anything. We're not going to hear anything until we see this waveform right here with some actual waves. So I'm going to go over here, and now we can hear something. Um, so to export this mix, we don't want to hear all this quiet stuff. So I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to zoom in a bit by hitting Alt, and then moving my mouse a little bit. You can do the same thing by hitting Alt and moving your trackpad, or doing a two-finger gesture on your trackpad. Um, so now I'm zoomed in. And I'm going to get right before the waveform starts right here. So like right here, it's flat, which means nothing. There's no real audio. And right here, we have our first kick drum and our first, like right when the first song starts. So I want to split this track. So I can go to, I believe, edit, split, regions at playhead. This is the playhead, and that's what I want to do. So I can do that, or command T. I always do command T. It's quicker. It's easier. I've memorized it. And now what, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to highlight it I, by just clicking on it and then hitting the delete key, it goes away. I'm going to do the same thing at the end of the mix too. So right here, I'm zooming in by doing the same thing, hitting Alt and then scrolling. You could do the two finger gesture again. Um, and then, whoops, get rid of that. I accidentally made this little yellow thing. You can just click on it to get rid of it. So anyway, we, are, we actually are going to use this later. So anyway, I'm going to go right here, and then I'm going to do the same thing. This time I'm going to do Command T, which is the keyboard shortcut. Keyboard shortcuts are almost always quicker if you know them by heart. So uh, now that this this is what we want, so I'm going to click on this region and then hit Delete again. Now I'm going to click out of this thing and then zoom. And now we have this. Um, this is our waveform. And this is the beginning. So we don't want it all the way over here. We want it over here. So I'm going to get that to the beginning. So now if I hit enter to get my play head back to the beginning, space bar, it plays right away. And that's exactly what we want, which is awesome. The last thing that we're going to do before we export this is get this to the correct volume. We turn the gain down a little bit because we didn't want it to clip. But when we export it, we want it to be a similar volume to all of our other songs or all of our other tracks. So to do that, we're going to put a limiter on. So I'm going to put a limiter on the master track right here. So I'm going to go down. I clicked right here to get a plugin. And then I'm going to go down to Dynamics, Adaptive Limiter, and then hit Stereo. Because we did record this in stereo. Um, if you were using our friend over here, this guy, the sound card, uh, it, it might give you the option to do mono. Doesn't matter. But anyway, right here it gives us three decibels of gain. We want it. We basically want it to get right around to our zero. And I'm going to turn this to negative one because the new update of Logic Pro um, turns it a different color and it bothers me. It makes no sense why it bothers me, but it does. So anyway, I'm going to go back here, and we still have negative six point seven. We want to get it right around to zero. So I'm going to keep giving it gain. I'm just clicking and dragging. Maybe let's try like 8.1. It's two. Yeah, this is perfect. It's it's just about at zero, maybe a little bit less. And this is gonna be close enough. It's gonna be louder. So I'm gonna stop that, click out of here. The last thing we have to do is export this in Logic. It's called bouncing the track. So I'm gonna click on the on the region right here, and then we see that this gets highlighted right here. This is our region parameter. So I'm gonna click on this and now it's yellow. So what this would do in Logic Pro is it would cycle. Like if I played this, it would like go back here. But it has a second functionality which, te which tells the um, software from where to where to bounce it. So like start at the beginning and then end at the end. So to get to the bounce, you can go to file, bounce, regions in place. Oh, no, that's not what I meant to do. Sorry, I, I always do Command-B. So it's bounce, project, or section, Command-B to bounce it. 
And almost always you want to compress your audio just because if you, let's say you record like a half an hour mix or an hour mix and it's uncompressed, um, that file will be massive. And most likely you're already, you're already playing, um, MP3s and not uncompressed files. If you're playing uncompressed files and you want an uncompressed mix, that's totally fine. You can totally do that. You do it right here in the PCM, but most people who are doing this just want to listen to their music at a pretty good quality and MP3 can do that. So we're going to click MP3 and you can pick your bit rate, which is 320. 320 is the best bit rate that you can do, but you can also change it. So let, let's say you have an, like a two hour mix and you don't have a whole ton of room on your computer or a whole ton of storage on your computer to save it. I would say you could go down to all the way to 128. This will be the um, probably the lowest you want to go before you can really tell the quality deteriorates. Um, but honestly, anything above that is going to be good. 320 is going to be the best. If you have on if you have your MP3s as 320 or on Spotify, if you have the best quality, or I think it might be called Extreme. I think I went over how to do that in a different tutorial. Um, if you have that quality on, that's going to be 320. So if you're recording, all, if you're playing all your tracks at 320 and you want to keep them the same quality, keep them at 320. But anyway, that's probably too much for that. So the next thing, all you got to do is hit OK. It's going to bounce. And let's just call this recording test. And I have this in my folder right here. You can pick where you're going to send it to. I have this 2019-8. Uh, That's August for me. And hit bounce. Now it's bouncing. Just convert it to MP3. And we're done. So to find where that is, we'll go to a finder window. And I was already here, so I found it. And this is it right here. And this is our mix. Yeah, so other than that, that's about it. If you like this video or if it helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or video suggestions, be sure to leave a comment. If you want to see more content like this and check out my original music, DJ performances, sound design tutorials, or overall DJ videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.